You're listening to The Straight Line on MRN.com, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices, every day. And also brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Hi, everybody. Welcome to MRN's The Straight Line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Ralph Shaheen here with you. Doug Herbert is here. He's not in the studio, but he is on the phone. We're going to get to him just for a second. Uh, wow. Championship weekend in the books. 2019 is all put to bed, and that's where we're going to kick off our coverage right now. Uh, Doug, we're going to go red light, green light, right out of the books. Okay, pal? Here's here's what we're going to okay. do, because, <laughs> because the green light is... Uh, all of our champions, and it's you being in London. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But you know what? I think we got to start with a red light. Steve Torrance yep. wins the championship, but gets into this squabble at the far end with Cameron Ferre there at the end of the first round. Your thoughts? Well, I don't have any problem with getting in a squabble. Uh, but, you know, you go over. And I, I don't know that, that uh, Steve had any reason to hit the kid. I, I, don't, I don't think that was called for. You know, racing's racing, and I don't care whether you stage first, you stage last, you deep stage. Uh, I've gotten to hassles with Kenny Bernstein, with Joe Motto, with all of them, Don Perdome, and they say, hey, you know, you deep stage on me. Yeah, you're, you're, you're dirty pulling. You know what I tell them? Hey, go check the rule book. There's nothing wrong with deep staging. There's nothing wrong with staging last or staging first, whatever. But to go over there and, and slap the guy, I don't know. That 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 wasn't cool in my book. I, and I don't know the whole story. Maybe there's something else for I saw the video, as probably most of our listeners and viewers did. That just didn't seem like it was cool. So that's a definite red light. Yeah, you know, where it got me was, look, I understand you're frustrated over it. You're battling for a championship and all of that. The, the swinging at him part was the part that I have to draw the line at, right? Right. It, right. It's, it's the one part where I don't, I don't mind racers having disagreements and even arguing about it, what have you, but we can't take a swing at him. <laughs> Right. That nope, to me no. was very unchampion like. And I, I hate to see that hang over Steve's head here uh, after what has been a very strong and very impressive season. Um, we sure. shouldn't be starting our conversation today with that. Well, exactly right. And, it, and it's unfortunate. I hope Steve looks back at it and thinks, well, that was a dumb move. What did I do that for? You know, uh, then on the other hand, we've got. Doug Coletta that wins the race basically did everything that he could other than get a few extra bonus points in qualifying. And man, he missed that championship. I a little bit heartbroken. I got to tell you for Doug Coletta and the Coletta team for missing out, but you know what? That's racing. That's the way it goes. Uh, Jack Beckman also winning the race and just barely missing the championship, but Robert Height, I mean, you can't argue Robert Height's dominance this year. I mean, they, they really dominated most of the year. So it's not, not hard to, uh, not hard to, you know, you, you kind of got to cheer for them and applaud them for the job that they did. Andrew Hine wins the championship. Uh, they had a little problem, obviously, at Pomona. They didn't perform like they would have there. But, man, he was a champion all year long. And then Eric Enders winning the championship. Man, I mean, she was really the champion. I mean, she ran like the champion most of the year. So you can't argue with any of that. I absolutely agree. I think all four of our championship winners were, without a doubt, the class of the field throughout the season, don't you agree? Yeah, you have to agree. I mean, performance-wise, they all four of them. Uh, you know, and this, the way the championship countdown deal comes down, I mean, it you know it really puts a lot of pressure on them in the last few races. But I think that the, the the racers that won the championships, at the end of the day, you know, that's, they're probably they're they're probably the right ones. They're the ones who should have won. They and they've really not just been strongest in the last couple races. And it's happened like that a few times where somebody barely gets in and then they win the championship. I don't really think that's the case this year. I think, I think really probably the best teams overall have, have probably ended up winning the championship. As you look at these four title winners, uh, I, you know, hey, look, Pomona's not that far off again in February yeah. in this thing all beginning. Which one do you think has the best shot of repeating? Oh, boy, that's hard to say. I mean, if you, you know, if you start at the top, I mean, and top fuel, uh, how do you argue? I mean, Torrance, the way that he's ran the last three years has been pretty pretty impressive. I mean, the you know, he lost to uh, Brittany Force a couple years ago, but, 
I don't know, he really probably had the best car that year. Then you go down and look at Robert Hyde. I mean, Robert Hyde, how can you argue? I mean, that car, Jimmy Proc, and the whole team that, that he has over there, they're impressive. I mean, they, they dominate, and I have a hard time believing that they're going to forget how to do that next year. Uh, Eric Enders, the whole team, you know, that Richard Freeman's put together over there at Elite, uh, you, you can't think they're going to forget how to race next year. She's certainly not going to forget how to drive and how to win. So that, that would be hard to choose against them. And then you look, you look at the motorcycles. I'm over here in the middle of London right now, so you hear all kinds of stuff going on. But, you know, but you look at Andrew Hines and the, the Vance and Hines, uh, you know, the Vance and Hines Harley-Davidson team. I mean, there's just – there's no way that you could ever bet against them. I mean, they're – you know, look at, look at what they have. Look at the resources that they have and look how hard those guys work. I know – how hard they work. It's going to be hard to bet against them. So all four of those champions, they're all going to be fighting for it again next year. There's no doubt about it. For me, I think Andrew Hines is the the quick one and the easy one for all the reasons you just said. That organization, top to bottom, is so strong. Uh, Erica Enders certainly is unbelievably talented and gifted as a racer and has a strong team behind her, but that is maybe the one class that has the most parity in it, right? Uh, True. With Greg Anderson in line and Butner and those guys. It's a really tough category to win. With with Steve, he's been on such a a roll, you got to wonder if that roll ever slows up a little bit. What I'm starting to think is, could Robert Hyde? Well, the pressure's getting to him. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah, maybe. Show when he gets in the little the argument at the finish line, like when you're the champion, you don't worry about stuff like that. That's right. That's right. And so you look at Robert Hyde, and you start thinking, John Force Racing could go on another massive streak, but it might not be John that we're talking about. It might be Robert Hyde. You know what? That's uh, yeah. That's a good point there. And. And just the way, you know, we've had Robert on the on the show several times and the way that he gets along with, uh, you know, with his, with his crew chief, uh, you know, Jimmy Proc. I mean, those guys are a team. I, I believe they're friends off the track and then they can, they know how to read each other's mind on the track. And when, when Robert's in the car, they, they understand what each other is thinking and what each other is doing. So I, I think you're right. I mean, that was like Austin Coyle with, with John Force for so yep. many years. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's hard to argue with that, and, and same thing, like you said, with the with the motorcycles. You know, you got Andrew Hines, you got Matt Hines over there. You've got, you know, you've got such a deep bench on that pro stock motorcycle team. You're right. I mean, that's man. How do you how do you argue against those guys continuing to dominate? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So for the green light, which we wanted to get to, not just the champions there, but also you're over in London, as you said. Um, so what are you doing over there? Well, I'm going to the British Drag Racing Hall of Fame event this week, so we're we're having some fun over here. Uh, I know Steve Gibbs, the former uh, vice yeah, president of NHRA sure. competition, he's over here. Uh, Jeff Stilwell is a big racing fan, and uh, he's a Bonneville racer. Uh, people could follow him. I think his, na- his name on Facebook is Salt Flat Racer or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, he actually has kind of underwritten the uh, bringing a bunch of the American racers over here. I know last year Connie Coletta. And, Ed McCulloch came over, and I'm not sure. Uh, well, I, and uh, actually, uh, uh, Clay Milliken came over. I'm not sure how many of the American racers are going to be here this year, but I know a few of them. I know one old Top Hill racer that'll be here, and hopefully, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll have some fun and show these British drag racing guys. I mean, they love their racing over here with Santa Pod and and you know all all the racing stuff. They really love it over here, and uh, so I'm just proud to be here and happy that they've invited me to part to be part of it. Did you ever race at Santa Pod? No, I'd been at Santa Pod a bunch of times. I was, uh, I was, uh, I helped announce for the main event race that they had a few years ago, but I never brought a car over here and race. I wanted to do it. I was going to bring over a car and run the European championship a couple times. And I just never did it. Uh, but I kind of look back and regret it. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe I could still do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know what the weather's like over there this week, but you know, maybe you could uh, make a pass or three. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, weather for running the top field car right now. It's not wet right now, luckily, but it's really cold. I don't I don't think that would be very good for running the top field car. So that, wh- that's where they have a really short drag racing season over here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what will you uh what will you be doing at the function? Well, I don't know. I know we're having a bench racing session where all the racers are gonna get up, kinda of tell some racing stories and uh I, I hopefully they'll let me get up and talk a little bit i know that uh, a couple of the 
British drag racers that are getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. So we'll uh, we'll have some fun with those guys and and uh, hopefully tell some good stories, make everybody laugh, and and uh, just be glad that they came out to the event. So I know you've been doing a little sightseeing with your lovely wife Mimi. Uh, what's the highlight been yeah. so far? Oh man, we went today over to the Tower of London. Yesterday we went to the Windsor Castle, and today we went to the Tower of London to sit there and look at these things that were built a thousand years ago. I mean, a thousand years ago. And you know, Henry the Eighth was out there having people, you know, having well, mostly his wives heads <laughs> cut off, you know. But I mean, it's just the history uh, of this place is pretty incredible. So it's it's uh, you know really really neat, really fun. Uh, to read about it and I, you know i like history anyways whether it's drag racing history or world history whatever i like history and uh just to be in a place where there's so much history is it's pretty neat well cool listen it's been a blast uh sitting alongside you this year you and mimi have a great time over there say hello to all the british drag racing fans for us and uh we'll see you when you get back will. i absolutely will i look forward to seeing you when i get back we'll go to uh we'll, we'll take our kids to go to a Hornets game, and please pass on my congratulations to all the all the uh, 2019 NHRA top field and funny car and pro stock and bike champions. You got it. Doug Herbert joining us. Enjoy the night over there in London. We're going to be right back. In fact, we're hoping to have Robert Hyde with us in a moment. Here's your chance to win a set of your very own Hercules tires. Go to HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Simply register, and each month we'll give away one set of tires. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading mileage coverage to get you wherever you need to go, no matter where the road takes you. Register now for your chance to win a set of Hercules Tires at HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Hercules Tires, ride on our street. This is Jesse's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. As a nurse, not making it to work was not an option. But driving through the snow with my wiper blades struggling, I just didn't feel safe. So I pulled into O'Reilly Auto Parts, and before I knew it, an employee was offering to install the wiper blades on my car. I got to stay out of the snow for a moment, and I still made it to work on time. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Welcome back to MRN's The Straight Line, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Uh, really excited to have joining us now. What is it, Robert, the three-time NHRA Funny Car Champion now, Robert Height? That's pretty cool. Uh, never, yeah, uh, I, like the, I like the way that sounds. I think you're going to like four-time better, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. There you, like Austin Coyle always says, how many championships is enough? And it, the answer is another one. Right. So uh, that means you've got to give your third champion's speech. How how's it start? What, what's the first thing out of your mouth? Well, it's it's no different than any other one. I'm nervous as hell to get up there and speak in front of all these people that are there. You know, my peers and the people we work with, because that's that's not really my thing. I'm not uh, that good at uh, you know speaking in in, in public, but uh, it's part of the part of it. And I think I'm just gonna. Tonight, I'm just going to go up there and enjoy it and make it fun, and it'll probably go a little easier. Do you uh, you tell a joke? Um, yeah, there's a couple I'm going to tell. Oh, yeah? You might, d- yeah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell. I'm yeah. gonna, when I introduce my team, you know, I'm going to talk about Jimmy Prock and Chris Cunningham being these, you know, geniuses that run my race car. And on their way to Bristol, Tennessee this year in their motorhomes, they were both scammed in a truck stop for money. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's my boys. Oh, that's great. A couple of real geniuses there, huh? Exactly. That's fantastic. Well, I'm sure, you know, listen, John's had some practice doing a few hundred of these. Um, is he giving you any tips on what to say? No, all he says is, you know, just uh, speak from the heart. That's great. You know, I was talking with, uh, Doug Herbert, who's over in London, by the way, and he wanted to pass on his sincere congratulations to you. Um, and we were talking about which of the four drivers that or and or rider, in Andrew's case, that won championships this year had the best shot at repeating again in 2020. And my pick was you. And the reason being that, look, John Force Racing has always been well known for going on streaks 
And maybe there you guys are about to do that again because you sure seem to have a pretty strong organization over there uh, once again. But it won't be John. It'll be you this time. How do you feel about that? Well, I like it. Um, I do feel that we probably have the best core group of crew chiefs and people that we've ever had that get along and work together, and that's really the key. Uh, I just, uh, you've got to have that because, you know, we were competitive every race this year, and when you really look at what how close the funny car competition is, to win like we did and lead from the start to the finish and you know, be steady all year long, win the most races, qualify number one the most amount of times. That shows that, uh, you know, we're not going anywhere. We're, we're here to stay. Are so you, it's pretty cool. Are you and Proc similar to the way John was with, with Austin and, and Bernie? Yes, it's a great relationship. Um, I was really bummed when he left before and went to the Schumacher's, but Luckily, we got him back, and, you know, he and I, we've been back together now three years, and all three years we've gone down to the last day with a shot at winning the championship, and we've won 203. So um, that right there is a, a pretty good streak, in my opinion, based on how close funny car racing is and how hard it is to win races and championships. It's uh, We're legit. Yeah, Beckman really pushed you guys to the end. I mean, you only took this thing by eight points. Um, so what made the difference? What are you, uh, and your crew doing that allowed you guys that make that eight point difference? Well, we didn't have any first round losses in the, in the countdown, which they, those kill you. And, uh, you know, we, we went in with a 20 point lead with, when they reset it, you know, and that having won the regular season made the difference. And basically you know, if there had not been a countdown or a points reset, it wouldn't have gone to the last day. We we would have had it hands down probably after Vegas. So, um, but it's just steadiness and, you know, biggest biggest run of my life was yesterday in the semifinals. You're racing Matt Hagen and you win, you're the champ, you lose, Hagen or Beckman are going to be, one of the ten, them are going to be a champ. So, that's a lot of pressure. And, I, you know, until you actually get in that position and perform, you don't know how you're going to how you're going to react. Are you going to fail? Are you going to choke? Are you going to rise to the occasion? And, uh, you know, and then, you know, you're also the way John Force Racing works. All of our sponsors share in all the wins. OK. And so you've got that on your shoulders. You've got the whole organization on your shoulders. Uh, you want to win for everybody a lot of pressure the the average person listening to this show myself included will never be in a pressure position quite like that how do you deal with that how did you compartmentalize that while you're sitting there in the car you know staring at the the bulbs well i keep trying to you know lie to myself and just keep telling myself it's just another run you know don't focus on the outcome focus on the task at hand that's what you've got to do if you're focusing on the outcome you're not really paying attention to what you have to do to get that outcome. And all I know is when I staged the car, my heart was beating out of my chest. And it all worked out. I mean, uh, I had a good light. car ran well. And uh, all I was doing when I got down there was staring at that wind light. I wasn't lifting until I saw the wind light. And luckily it came on. Obviously, you got to go give this speech now, but I'm sure the 2020 season starts pretty fast for you. What what do you do in the off season, and what will it be like? Well, it's uh, it's always busy. You know, you're organizing everything for the next year, and always looking at new sponsors, and you know, trying to renew the ones you have. And it's a full time job. You know, setting budgets for next year based on you know the the funding that we do have, and I think this year, this off season is going to be a little less hectic than last year because, you know, we weren't sure whether we were going to run four cars until January of last year. And, you know, we're pretty well set next year for four cars. And, you know, we're pretty set on the, the people gonna, that are going to, running, are going to be running these cars. And, uh, you know, that's half the battle right there. What's the one thing you do to treat yourself with this third championship? 
I really haven't thought about it much, but I'm going to do a little uh, shooting this off season. You know, I like to shoot trap. I used to do that competitively, but uh, there's some, luckily in Southern California, we have nice weather and I'm going to try to get out and, you know, do a little competitive shooting and, and kind of unwind a little bit. Well, I think you've earned it. You probably uh, have the right to go buy yourself a new gun too. All right. Well, listen, Robert, congratulations again on that third championship. Enjoy the uh, the celebration beginning tonight as you uh, say your speech and just relax, have some fun up there. I appreciate it, Ralph. Okay, Robert Hyde joining us now, three-time NHRA Funny Car Champion. We'll be right back. Hi, folks, Mike Bagley here. At MRN, we rely on equipment from Racing Electronics. Joey Logano to the lead on the back straightaway. Racing Electronics has scanners and headphones. We can listen to every uncensored conversation between driver and crew. You won the championship, baby, yeah! And when we need live audio, in-car cameras, and up-to-the-second statistics, we use their latest handheld unit called Legend. To learn more about these products and many others, visit RacingElectronics.com. Racing Electronics, the official two-way communication partner of MRN. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. This is Jesse's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. As a nurse, not making it to work was not an option. But driving through the snow with my wiper blades struggling, I just didn't feel safe. So I pulled into O'Reilly Auto Parts, and before I knew it, an employee was offering to install the wiper blades on my car. I got to stay out of the snow for a moment, and I still made it to work on time. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Welcome back, MRNs. The Straight Line presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Ralph Shaheen with you. Uh, wow, what a year it has been as we wrap up the 2019 NHRA Mellow Yellow Drag Racing season. We sure hope you've enjoyed all of our shows over the year. A couple a little bit of house cleaning to do for you. Of course, we got to give away at least one more set of Hercules tires. The free set of tires have been given away every month. And if you'd like to be a part of that, it's very simple. You just go to HerculesTire.com backslash MRN, sign up. Put your name in the hat, and who knows, maybe under your Christmas tree this year, there'll be a free set of Hercules tires. And speaking of Christmas, you know, that means February's right around the corner and the start of the 2020 drag racing season. I know it's hard to believe, but it is right there, and a trip back out to Pomona. So if you're thinking that maybe you need a last-second gift idea, how about tickets to the 2020 Winter Nationals? Well, you know how to get those. We've been telling to you all year long. You just go to NHRA.com. That red ticket tab in the upper right-hand corner, push the button, order up some tickets, and maybe surprise that drag racing fan under your uh, your list with some tickets under the tree for this season. Well, that'll about wrap it up for us here at MRN. We sure hope, I, hope you had a great time listening to us and enjoying the season with us. Congratulations once again to all of our champions for this year, Steve Torrance and Robert Hyde and Erica Enders and, of course, Andrew Hines. For Doug Herbert, my buddy, who's been sitting here with me all year long and our entire staff here at MRN, thank you for joining us. All the best in the offseason. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. And we'll see you when the 2020 NHRA drag racing season gets underway. So long, everybody.